Hello, and thank you for tuning into this Carleton University Career Services video titled Applying to Graduate and Professional Studies. Whether you are a current Carleton student or alumni, you may be contemplating career fields that require advanced degrees. The purpose of this informational video will help you answer the question, what do I need to know? as you prepare your applications for further educational programs. Now, you may be wondering what will be discussed over the course of this video. Well, in summary, we will be defining the purpose of graduate school and professional programs. We will be discussing the factors you should consider before applying. We will also be discussing how to research and apply to programs of interest so you can be as competitive as possible. We will go over next steps in terms of an action plan and key reminders. And lastly, we will also go over how Carleton University Career Services can help with your further education exploration and application packages. Now, Let's begin with the first section of this video, which is defining the purpose of graduate school and professional programs. So let's start with defining what is the purpose of just graduate school. Firstly, graduate school can help candidates build on the knowledge and skill sets obtained from previous undergraduate or graduate studies. For example, someone who has an honors bachelor of arts in sociology may want to pursue a minimum of a master of arts at the graduate school level in the same subject area so they could acquire more advanced research skills. In addition to master level programs, other common examples of graduate school credentials are PhDs, other doctorate level programs, graduate diplomas, or graduate certificates. Next, graduate school can also provide candidates with more opportunities for career advancement, bolster earning potential, and cultivate networks. For example, someone with a Bachelor's of Commerce degree in finance working in banking may choose to pursue a master's degree in finance or perhaps business administration. Advanced graduate programs such as these could help a candidate network with other aspiring business professionals and strengthen their competitiveness when applying for more senior roles in their field. And lastly, graduate school can prepare candidates to become research and industry informed experts in a specialized academic or occupational discipline. For example, Someone with an honors bachelor's degree in biological sciences may choose to pursue a master's degree in wildlife biology so they can become a specialist in conservation protocols and the latest fieldwork techniques. Furthermore, graduate school programs can be classified into three main categories. They are thesis-based programs, course-based programs, and professional-based programs. Now, you may be wondering, what are the differences between these three classifications? Well, to help differentiate between each of these aforementioned classifications, we will first define the differences between thesis-based and course-based graduate school programs. We will go over professional programs a little bit later. To start off, Thesis-based graduate school programs are typically one and a half to two year master's degrees or PhD or other doctorate level degrees that take about four plus years to complete. Whereas a course-based graduate school program can also be a one and a half to two year master's degree or doctorate level degree that also takes four plus years to complete. Additionally, course-based graduate school programs can be offered in the form of graduate diplomas or certificates that require a minimum of a completed undergraduate degree to apply. Another key difference is that thesis-based graduate school programs typically train candidates in advanced research methodologies. In addition to taking courses, students in these programs are expected to produce and defend original research in a particular academic field while supervised by a professor, whereas 
A course-based graduate school program typically equips candidates with advanced knowledge and analytical skill sets through lectures, projects, and experiential learning. Candidates in these programs may learn about research skills during their classes, but producing original research is not the main focus. Lastly, thesis-based graduate school programs are more ideal for candidates who want to become post-secondary educators, professional researchers, or scholarly experts. They typically want to use research to solve problems or contribute to an existing knowledge base, whereas a course-based graduate school program is more ideal for candidates who just want to broaden their career prospects and become industry-informed leaders in their respective fields. Now, a further question you may have is, what is an example of a thesis-based and a course-based graduate program? Well, let's look at an example focusing on the academic field of curriculum development and pedagogy in K-12 classrooms. In this case, an example of a thesis-based graduate program focusing on this aforementioned field could be a Master of Arts or MA for short. This degree type would be more ideal for candidates who want to develop research skills so they can contribute to the advancement of teaching practices. Candidates may want to work for think tanks, universities, or not-for-profit organizations that focus on research developments in education. In comparison, a course-based graduate program focusing on curriculum development and pedagogy, could be a Master's of Education, or M.Ed. for short. This degree type would be more ideal for candidates who want to strengthen their specialized knowledge in pedagogical theories and become industry leaders in the world of K-12 education. For instance, a seasoned K-12 educator may want to bolster their career prospects through an M.Ed. in this type of field and work as a senior decision maker for a district school board. Overall, whether you pursue a thesis-based or a course-based graduate program could very well depend on your preferred career goal, your preferred work settings, and scope of preferred responsibilities. Now that we've defined the main differences between thesis and course-based graduate school programs, we will go over our last classification type, which are professional programs. So what are they? For starters, the main goal for professional programs is to prepare graduates to work in roles that often require licensure or specialized training. An example of this could be a speech language pathologist needing to complete a minimum of a master's degree from an accredited speech language pathology program as part of their licensing requirements. Another defining attribute of a professional program is that they are typically designed to meet the standards of a particular accreditation or regulatory body. So an example of this could be Canadian schools that offer an accredited professional master's degree in occupational therapy to train aspiring OTs. Well, in order for these professional programs to maintain their accreditation status, they need to adhere to the educational training and curriculum standards set by a relevant accreditation body, such as the Canadian Association of Occupational Therapists. Accreditation bodies like this example ensure that the quality of professional programs is maintained at each applicable school by using ongoing monitoring and evaluation protocols. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that professional programs can be offered at various post-secondary levels, including the graduate level, such as a master's or doctorate level degree, or the undergraduate entry level, such as a bachelor's degree. And lastly, one final thing to keep in mind is that professional programs can be either thesis-based or course-based. Additionally, they often require the completion of internships, practicums, or clinical training to learn industry skill sets. So an example of this could be an applicant pursuing either a Master of Arts 
or a master of education in counseling psychology to eventually become a registered psychotherapist in Ontario. Now, both degrees are professional programs in nature. However, the master of education would be ideal for someone who just wants to be trained in counseling psychology via course-based learning and experiential training. On the other hand, the Master of Arts would be more ideal for someone who wants to have research experience in addition to being trained in counseling psychology techniques. Now, as we briefly discussed in the previous slide, professional programs help prepare graduates to work in roles that often require licensure or specialized training. Roles that often require licensure are known as regulated professions. And to become licensed, an applicant must fulfill an accredited and recognized professional training program. In addition, candidates may have to complete competency exams and acquire supervised work experience as part of the licensing requirements. Now, these licensing requirements are typically stipulated by the applicable regulatory body overseeing an applicant's preferred location of practice. When it comes to Canada, each province and territory will most likely have their own version of a regulatory body corresponding to a particular regulated profession. Overall, the main purpose of a regulatory body is to protect public interest by ensuring license holders in a specific occupation remain competent and continuously adhere to ethical standards. To help explore this further, let's look at a few more common examples of professional degrees associated with regulated occupations in Ontario. For instance, Someone within an accredited Juris Doctor degree, known as a JD, will be trained in how to practice law. Successful candidates who complete a recognized JD program can eventually become a licensed lawyer in Ontario after completing all other exam and experience requirements set out by the applicable regulatory body known as the Law Society of Ontario. This regulatory body regulates all licenses for lawyers in the province. Some other examples of professional degrees associated with regulated occupations in Ontario are a Bachelor of Engineering to eventually become a professional engineer, a Bachelor of Education in Teacher Education to eventually become a teacher either in elementary or high schools, a BSW or MSW to eventually become a registered social worker, a Master of Audiology to eventually become an audiologist, a PharmD to eventually become a pharmacist, a DDS or DMD to eventually become a dentist, a DVM to eventually become a veterinarian, an MD to eventually become a physician or surgeon, or a PhD in clinical psychology to eventually become a registered psychologist. As you can see, professional programs can occur at all levels. Each of these aforementioned examples prepare candidates to meet the educational requirements for a specific profession and eventually register with the applicable regulatory body after fulfilling any other licensing criteria. Now that we have defined the purpose of graduate school and professional programs, the next section of this video will examine the factors you should consider before applying. Let's begin. First off, a good question to ask yourself is, would you buy a car before taking it for a test drive? For all you know, the engine makes too much noise, the seats are too uncomfortable, and the overall fit, well, is just not there. A test drive can make you feel more comfortable with your choice. Now, you may be wondering, why is Career Services talking about cars? <laughs> what does this have to do with this video? Well, car shopping and career planning can be quite similar. 
Career planning allows you to test drive a career before entering it. This sentiment also applies to research in graduate schools and professional programs as well. To that end, the next few slides will be going over pertinent questions you should be asking yourself when determining if further education is the appropriate next step for your career plan. For starters, you should think about questions related to your goals, your motivation, and the labor market information associated with your field of interest. Let's start with your goals. The main thing you should ask yourself before applying to graduate schools or professional programs is, what are my career and learning goals? When contemplating your response to this question, you should think about the following. Do I have a specific career title in mind? Am I passionate about this career field? And lastly, do I thrive more in a thesis-based, course-based, or professional training environment? By thinking about these factors, you will be able to articulate realistic short-term and long-term career goals while also deciding what learning environment would be most ideal for you. Next, you should reflect on your motivation by asking yourself, what is my motivation for pursuing graduate school or professional programs? When contemplating your response to this question, you should think about the following. Do I want a career change? Do I want to earn more money or perhaps apply for a promotion? And lastly, is my career goal regulated and does it require a specific program? By thinking about these factors, you will be able to articulate your motivation for advanced education. Understanding and remembering your motivation will serve you well when handling the demanding schedule of graduate schools or professional programs. Lastly, you should also ask yourself the question, am I aware of the labor market info associated with my career goal? When contemplating your response to this question, you should think about the following. First, what is the salary range for my career goal? Is my career goal in demand? And if so, where? And lastly, what are the common working conditions and skill requirements affiliated with my career goal? By thinking about these factors, you will be able to decide whether pursuing graduate school or professional programs will be a worthwhile investment depending on your personal expectations and the field you wanna work in. In addition to your goals, motivation, and relevant labor market information, you should also consider your academic criteria, work experience criteria, personal criteria, and financial criteria before applying to graduate school or professional programs. In terms of academic criteria, you should ask yourself, do I have the appropriate degree to qualify for my program of interest? In terms of work experience criteria, you should ask yourself, should I pursue graduate school or professional programs immediately after my undergraduate degree, or should I work for a while and then apply? In terms of personal criteria, you should ask yourself, do I currently have the personal bandwidth to take on the challenges of graduate school or professional programs? Also, do I have a good personal support network in place? Lastly, in terms of financial criteria, you should ask yourself, am I in a good place financially to take on the expenses of graduate school or professional programs? Am I aware of my financial assistance options, such as loans, scholarships, lines of credit, or TA ships? And also, will the benefits of the degree outweigh the costs? By reflecting on these criteria, you can make a more informed decision about whether you are prepared and eligible to apply to more advanced educational options. 
Now that we have gone over what to consider before applying to graduate school or professional programs, the next section of this video will review how to research and apply to these programs. When researching and applying to programs, the first step you should take is asking yourself, where do I look? To help answer this, you should consider the following. First, ask yourself, do I plan on studying in Canada? To explore your options, you should review online post-secondary directories at the provincial, territory, or national level to see which schools offer your programs of interest. Next, ask yourself, do I plan on studying outside of Canada? To explore your options, you should review online post-secondary directories at the international level to see which schools offer your programs of interest. And lastly, ask yourself, is my career goal associated with a regulated profession? Based on where you would like to eventually work, you should review the list of accredited programs recognized by the regulatory body you would adhere to. Now, if you're unsure of which directories to consult or where to find them, your career services department would be happy to help. We will discuss how to get in touch with us later in this video. Once you assembled a short list of potential schools to apply to, the next step you should take is to review the admission websites of each respective program you're interested in. You should compile a list of factors to consider when reviewing each website in detail. This will help you conduct comparative research. For starters, are there academic requirements listed on each school's admission website? And if so, make sure you consider, first, what type of prior education is needed? For example, do you need an honors four-year Bachelor of Science or would a Bachelor of Arts suffice? Or perhaps you need a thesis-based master's degree before applying to a doctorate program that focuses heavily on research. Next, ask yourself, is an undergraduate degree in a particular field of study required? For example, do you need an honors Bachelor of Science in Biology to pursue a master's degree in Biogeography, or would a degree from a related field still make you eligible to apply? Another thing to ask yourself is, are there any specific academic course prerequisites to apply to your program of interest? For example, there are certain math, science, and social science courses needed to apply to most schools of dentistry programs. Another thing to ask yourself is, what is the minimum admission average to apply to your program of interest? For example, to be considered for some graduate school or professional programs, candidates must have a B plus average. Furthermore, you should ask yourself, how is the admission average calculated? Some graduate schools or professional programs may calculate a candidate's admission average based on their last two years of study, their best 20 grades, or even their overall cumulative grade average. Lastly, you should also ask yourself, is the admission average calculated using a particular scale? For example, some graduate schools or professional programs may state that candidates must have a minimum GPA of 3.0 measured on a 4.0 scale. To that end, you may have to convert your admission average grades if your educational institutions used a different grading scale. Overall, it's important to cross compare academic requirements across your schools of interest so you can apply to the programs where you can shine in the best way possible. Another factor to consider when reviewing admission websites is whether your program of interest requires any relevant work experience. And if so, make sure you consider what type of work experience is accepted. For example, does the school only consider paid experience or would volunteer, co-op, internships,
placements or experience from students clubs satisfy this admission requirement. Next, ask yourself, does this work experience have to be in a particular field? For example, some candidates may require work experience specifically in the social service or human service sector to qualify for an MSW. Another thing to ask yourself is, does the work experience have to involve research? For example, some candidates may require research experience obtained from writing an undergraduate thesis or working in a research lab to qualify for a research-based master's program. Furthermore, another thing to ask yourself is how much work experience is necessary and how recent does the experience have to be? For example, some candidates may require two years of professional experience in public administration and the experience has to be from the last 10 years to qualify for a graduate degree in public policy. Lastly, you should also ask yourself, does the work experience have to involve shadowing a licensed professional in a particular field? For example, some professional vet schools require candidates to shadow a licensed veterinarian to verify if the career field would be a good fit. Overall, it's important to cross compare work experience requirements across your schools of interest so you can determine if you need to bolster your work history before applying. Another factor to consider when reviewing admission websites is whether your program of interest requires the completion of any standardized tests. Depending on what programs you apply to, you may need to complete one of the following examples. For instance, the LSAT, known as the Law School Admission Test, if you're applying to law school programs. The MCAT, which is known as the Medical College Admissions Test, if you're applying to medical school programs. The OAT, known as the optometry admission test, if you're applying to optometry school programs. The DAT, known as the dental aptitude test, if you're applying to dental school programs. The GMAT, known as the graduate management admission test, which is a test used by many business school programs at the graduate level. The GRE, known as the graduate records examination, which is a test used by some graduate and professional programs in certain academic disciplines. And lastly, the CASPER test, known as the computer-based assessment for sampling personal characteristics, which is another test used by many professional study programs. Now, if you're required to complete any of these aforementioned test examples and you're unsure of how to prepare or where to write them, your career services department would be happy to help and provide further resources. As mentioned before, we will discuss how to get in touch with us later in this video. Now, another factor to consider when reviewing admission websites is whether your program of interest requires certain application documents, references, confirmed supervisors, or interviews. Depending on what programs you apply to, you may need to investigate the following. Firstly, is a personal statement required? This will be similar to an admission essay explaining why you are interested in the program you're applying to, why do you feel you are qualified for the program, and how can the program help you reach your career goals? Each program may have different content expectations for your personal statement. Another thing to investigate is whether a resume or CV is required. This will showcase your work experience, applicable research experience, and educational credentials to date. Another thing to investigate is whether an autobiographical sketch is required. This will be a document that will showcase your educational experience, work experience, volunteer experience, extracurricular involvement, and community involvement that will be relevant to the programs you are applying to. Another thing to investigate is whether professional and academic references are required. 
Professional references are typically supervisors who have witnessed your work ethic and relevant roles, whereas academic references are typically professors who can attest to your academic fortitude when handling the demanding schedule of graduate school or professional programs. Another thing to investigate is whether a faculty supervisor is required before an application is sent. You should see if certain programs have faculty who have research interests similar to yours. This can be a crucial factor to explore when comparing graduate or professional programs that are thesis-based in nature. And lastly, one more thing to investigate is whether interviews with admission committees are required. Some programs may screen applicants based on their responses to questions pertaining to their qualifications, goals, and industry opinions in addition to their written application documents. Overall, researching these possible requirements can help you manage your time and determine how far in advance you should prepare your applications before applying to graduate school or professional programs. If you require further assistance completing documents, securing references, approaching potential faculty supervisors, or preparing for admission interviews, please be sure to contact Career Services. Lastly, the following factors are additional things you should be investigating when deciding what graduate school or professional programs to apply to. These factors could be, are there full-time or part-time options? Are there online or in-person options? What are the first year start dates so you know when you could roughly start, such as the fall, winter, or summer term? What are the program links and how much will this cost you tuition-wise? Are there advanced standing options in case certain credits from a previously completed degree could transfer? Are there dual degree options? For instance, if you wanna be a physician who also conducts medical research, is there a program option where you could pursue a research PhD in medical sciences while also completing an MD at a medical school at the same time? Is the school program accredited for a particular regulated profession you're interested in? How many other schools are there with the same program? Also, what are the admission statistics like, such as the number of applicants who apply versus the number of applicants who are accepted? This will give you an idea of how competitive the admission process may be. You should also review the weighting for each admission requirement. For instance, some schools may assign more weight to your admission average, whereas other schools may look at applications more holistically. Other things you should investigate is whether there are co-op or internship options associated with your program of interest. Also, what are the class sizes? What are the curriculum and career outcomes like? What types of employers recruit from your programs of interest? Are there available TA and RA ships? Are there funding and employment opportunities on campus? What are the housing and childcare accommodations like if you need to relocate? What are the geographical location and transportation options like? Am I going to enjoy living there? Are there any student services and associations you would benefit from? Are there any unique program features such as international exchange options? Are there upper year student mentors to speak with? What are the reputations and rankings for your programs of interest? Are they well recognized amongst the industries you want to work in? And lastly, see if there are informational sessions to attend and ask further questions before applying. Overall, these factors can heavily influence which programs you'll end up applying to and which offers you'll potentially accept, depending if you receive multiple offers from different schools.
Now, once you had a chance to document the different admission requirements associated with each of your programs of interest, the third step is reflecting on your eligibility versus your competitiveness. You will want to do this because many programs could be highly competitive. In some cases, the number of applicants may exceed the number of available spots for the programs you want the most. To that end, meeting the minimum admission requirements does not always guarantee acceptance, and it is very important to ensure your applications are as competitive as possible. To reflect on your eligibility versus how competitive your application could be, consider asking yourself the following questions. First, do I need to improve my admission average? If so, how? Do I need to complete any missing academic prerequisites? If so, how? Do I need to obtain additional academic or professional references? If so, how? Do I need to prepare more for any standardized admission tests? If so, how? And lastly, am I willing to apply again if need be? If so, how? What could I do differently? If you would like to discuss how to make your application more competitive, we encourage you to contact Career Services. We are happy to help and we can discuss further steps. Once you finalize your comparative research and assess your eligibility versus your competitiveness, it's important to set a series of pre-application deadlines for yourself. This way, you'll know when you should complete each application requirement before you submit. You are encouraged to start preparing as early as possible so you can give yourself enough time to meet program eligibility criteria and factor in what you can do to stand out when competing with other applicants. To that end, the last question you should be asking yourself is, where do I submit my applications? Well, there are two possible locations. First, some schools will use their own internal admission website to accept applications for their respective programs. These admission websites will list the next round of deadlines for the upcoming academic year. The other location could be a centralized application portal. Some schools collectively use the same application portal to accept applications for their respective programs. The deadline is typically the same for all programs listed in the centralized portal. A common example is Ontario Law Schools. All Ontario Law Schools use the same centralized application portal called the Ontario Law School Application Service. Once you submit your applications, you should discover when schools will release their decisions so you can check for any official or conditional offers. It's important to monitor your applications frequently in case you need to submit any additional documents or participate in any further admission interview cycles. Now that we've reviewed some key factors to be cognizant of when applying to graduate schools or professional programs, let's look at next steps in terms of an action plan and key reminders. First, if you're in the planning and research phases, you should try to attend any information sessions for prospective students at your schools of interest. These sessions will be pivotal when seeking answers to questions that may not be found on an admission website. These sessions are typically facilitated by student ambassadors, applicable faculty, as well as administrators who could very well be the ones reviewing your potential applications. Next, you should create a document you can use to compile all your comparative school research in one spot. This can be in the form of a Word document or spreadsheet. This strategy will help you visualize the variation in admission requirements from program to program and could help influence what schools you apply to based on how well you will shine as an applicant. And lastly, you should drop by your Career Services office to discuss further exploration in a one-on-one -on -one setting. 
Now, you may be wondering, how can Carleton University Career Services help me with my exploration and questions? Well, first of all, the cycle we base our service model on is called the career planning cycle. Through this model, we help you conduct self-exploration, gather resources to conduct research, prepare goals, and advise you how to start your plan of action. Additionally, we offer a wide range of services and supports to students and alumni. Through our career planning cycle, we offer the following specific services, such as resume and cover letter support, job search support, networking events, further education supports, interview prep and mock interviews, LinkedIn reviews, exploring major program changes, and researching your career options, especially if you are unsure what path to take. In terms of our specific further education supports, we can assist with many aspects of the process from helping you explore graduate school or professional programs that you may want to apply to, such as masters, PhDs, graduate diplomas, or graduate certificates. We can help review documents required as part of the application, such as CVs or personal statements. And also, we assist with admission interview prep for programs where this is part of the admission process. In terms of where you can find us, all Carleton University students and alumni can access our services at 401 Torrey Building on campus. Our hours of operation are from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday to Friday. We also offer drop-in appointments on a first-come, first-served basis from 1 to 4 p.m. You can also book a scheduled appointment with us by calling our office phone number at 613-520-6611. You can also try emailing us at career at carlton.ca or chatting with our staff via our live chat feature on our website, carlton.ca slash career. This brings us to the end of our video. We hope you found the information useful when preparing for graduate school and professional programs. If you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to us at Career Services. We look forward to helping you explore your future plans.